The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Broadcasting live from the Toscano Cigar Soundstage in Salem, New Hampshire, USA. And broadcasting around the world, this is the Cigar Authority. Transmitting since 2010, the Cigar Authority is the longest lasting cigar podcast ever. Grab a cigar and light him up, light him up, light him up. This is the Cigar Authority. Saturday, May 9th, 2020, live from the Toscano Cigar Soundstage. Today, we are selling tickets to Two Guys Smoke Shop's 35th anniversary. 35 years of a cigar shop I founded in 1985, and today, I'll share questions and answers people always ask, and some that nobody even thought of asking. Welcome, everybody, to The Cigar Authority. And you're listening to The Cigar Authority, now in its 11th year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. <sighs> Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. And you catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog at thecigarauthority.com. It's so exciting. We're doing so many things at the same time. The great news for us is after... uh, what, uh, 46 days, we are opening our store on Monday. At the same time, we're celebrating our 35th anniversary, so we're selling tickets <coughs> to the anniversary party while construction is going on, rehabbing the upstairs at the studio, lots of stuff. We, we painted the inside of the Nashua store. Work is being done on the outside if it'll stop snowing. Yes, it is May 9th, and we had snow today. It's 35 degrees out. It's chilly. Mother Nature is uh, not happy, and uh, Mother's Day is this Sunday, so hopefully that'll be the end of of that. But uh, welcome, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. We're celebrating 35 years. We're going to get to later on. We have the folks at Diamond Crown celebrating 125 years. Today was a big event we were having with them. The show must go on, so we are going to smoke Diamond Crown all day today. Uh, Barry, what are we smoking first? Well, today's first cigar is the Diamond Crown Number no. 4, and it's manufactured in the Dominican Republic for J.C. Newman Cigar Company. The size is a 5.5 by 54, featuring a Connecticut shade wrapper, Dominican binder, and a selection of five different tobaccos from the Caribbean and Central America. It is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package, and a single cigar will set you back thirteen thirty nine, while a box of 15 is one seventy seven ninety nine which comes out to $11.87 per single. It's a savings of over $23 or 11% off the box price on twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick-and-water retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. And later on, we're going to give you an offer uh, you can't, <coughs> can't refuse. I know what you're thinking. Maybe you'll buy a few of them. This looks like a Toro. It's a Robusto. It's a Robusto. They're all Robustos. They're all Robustos, but it's also five and a quarter, so it is a Robusto. Yeah, five and a half by 54, five and so a half. it's like a Robusto extra. And yeah. the, the four-inch one is a Robusto, and the six-inch one, Robusto. Yeah. They're all Robustos. Yeah. The, you go by the number. And the cigar later on we're going to smoke is a double Perfecto, and it's not even a Perfecto. It is a, it's a Perfecto, but it's not a double Perfecto, so... They, they got something going on there. We'll get to that, but let's give it a cut and light and see what it's all about. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by our friends at Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. I miss our studio audience cutting along with us and all that. Um, as we are going to open... The shop on Monday, um, we are not going to have a lounge for people to hang around. and We're not going to have an opening here in the studio for people to be a studio audience yet either. But hopefully that's coming right down the road from there. They're doing this in um, stages, I guess. Yeah. So we're on stage two on Monday. Right. And a lot of states are first entering stage one, mm. which we were lucky enough 
Pot half empty, half full. Yeah. Depends how you want to look at it. But we were lucky enough to continue to do curbside service. Yeah, lucky. I'm, I'm so I'm so mad about this whole thing, but uh, we'll get through it together. We're gonna light our cigar today with the Vertigo Blizzard. Cold drawer is raisins. Go on. Raisin toast. This is the original raisin toast. Raisin, raisin toast. Raisin toast. Raisin. Raisin toast. <laughs> Jonathan's raisin like, this is going to be raisin. a long show. <laughs> I've had a long morning. The Vertigo Blizzard features single action, which is you press the button down, the lid pops open, three jets come alive, fueled by the patented Vertigo big ass tank. You got easy adjustment at the bottom. The Vertigo Blizzard, because it was snowing this morning. It was. Big, May, huge flakes. By May the 9th. Way. May 9th. The Vertigo Blizzard, $9.99. And and you know we know that the the biggest selling one of the Vertigo is the, the cyclone. cyclone. For some reason, this is even a little better. It's a little smaller, but it's got it's double got wall protection. Double wall protection is the part of it because I and think, the lid pops open. Yeah. So for the same exact price, you can get this. So if you're sitting on on, on the regular one, the um, the cyclone. The cyclone, cyclone Step it up. And not to knock the Cyclone, because the Cyclone is a, a a lighter that will take a beat and keep on lighting. Yeah. But the Blizzard feels sturdier. It feels stronger. Are we just going to pretend like he doesn't have his hand wrapped like a boxer right now? Is this something that <laughs> I, we're ignoring? I saw him on Thursday. I know the story of this. Did you get a boo-boo, Baron? I don't know how I did it, but I keep getting a shooting pain on the outside of my wrist shooting up. Um, if and, everything uh, wasn't going on, I would probably go get an x-ray. I still might do it because it hasn't gotten any better. Uh, but I'm keeping it bandaged up so I don't move it do the you, wrong way. Do you think you got the carpal tunnel syndrome? My wife thinks it's carpal tunnel. I think it's a handline stress I factor. don't think it's carpal tunnel because he's right-handed, if you know what I'm saying, <laughs> Ed Sullivan. <laughs> I know what you're saying. I think it's a hairline fracture. but Wouldn't you have had to have fallen to get? So I was out on Sunday. My friend had bought a house and... The we alcohol were, involved. Yeah, there was drinking. We were one chair. We were one chair short, so I was sitting on the steps. And I think when I pushed up to get off the steps, that's maybe when I did it, pushing your body weight. Yeah, but we, I I was drinking, so I didn't feel it at the instant. Yeah. I felt it the next morning. Dave, should we get him one of those alert things? Help of falling, and <laughs> I can't, I can't get, get up. up. I think in his case, it would just be my hand hurts. I can't get up. <laughs> so Diamond Crown, twenty five years ago, the folks came out with Diamond Crown. For the hundredth anniversary, and here we are. So I want to say a big congratulations on 25 years with Diamond Crown and 125 years with the company J.C. Newman to Eric and Bobby Newman uh, and to, to Eric's son Drew Newman. Now fourth generation, and going back to Stanford, Eric and Bobby's dad and Julius Caesar, J.C. Newman. That's where it comes from. Julius Caesar Newman, 125 um, year old company. U.S. based, unbelievable, and they're nice. They're nice people, mm -hmm. and a nice cigar always was my thing. At the same time, so you understand, it was Diamond Crown and Opus X at the same time. They hardly release things to begin with, anyway. And here it was for the hundredth anniversary. Two big things happen at the same time, and it was Opus X and Diamond Crown. And uh, here we are now. So. Um, Typically, two guys smoke shop closes six days a year, maximum. And I say maximum because some years I would even do um, Labor Day and um, Memorial oh, Day. Day. I would work it myself and let the staff end up having off, and I work by myself. Um, I counted it was two hundred and four days. Two guys smoke shop has been closed in thirty five years. Two hundred and four days. This year. 46 already. 46. Close to the public. I mean. Yeah. So um, Monday we open. It's May 11th, Monday at 10 a.m. Please come back. Those that are listening <laughs> to the show, we need you. I'm just. I'm Always appreciated our customers, but when they've been gone, holy mackerel. I'm looking forward even to the silly elbow bumps. From some of the regulars. just uh, We're not going to do the fist bump thing and spread germs around. We'll do the elbow thing, but just a little contact. That's what I miss. Uh, yeah, I want to touch and I'm not a man. I'm not a people person, really, but <laughs> yeah, you know, I miss it. During the pandemic, I taught my dog how to shake hands mm. just because I don't have that anymore. And he's very good at it. 
What, what? When do you ever shake hands anyways? I don't. Okay. So we're selling tickets to Two Guys Anniversary Party today. And uh, we've do, been doing this for a long time. The anniversary party started on our eighth anniversary, and we've been doing it ever since. We'll get di- deeper into it as we go on in the show. But the tickets go on sale today at 10 a.m. This year, we decided we're only going to do 400 tickets instead of 500 tickets because people will feel a little better that it's cut down and it'll have a little more space uh, because it honestly is very jammed. I mean, we right. I, I, I jam them in. So we'll take it down to 400 people. Also, I was concerned, am I going to be able to sell that many tickets, 500 tickets, right? So we'll take it down to 400. Um, the event is not till September 16th, but typically at the beginning of May, we sell the tickets every single year. Uh, being not open, I was very concerned today. First off, are people going to want to gather in that amount of people? And the second thing is we're not even open to, sh- to be able to. All week we have these signs in the store that explain the event, and we get to talk to people leading up to the event. And because, hype it. Yeah. Anything you, when you're doing a promotion or something, you want to build up steam before the tickets even go on sale. Then they sell, they sell and it happens quick. Typically, we can sell an event out in hours and not days. And I didn't think it was going to happen this year, that it was going to be as good as it has been. So um, as of before the show started, we have sold uh, about 250 of the 400 tickets uh, in, the, in a matter of two hours. So while the show's going on, if it, as it's getting closer and closer to a sellout, I'll let you know. I, I actually estimated we would sell about between 100 and 150 today. Before the show even started, we were at 250 sold. So thank you to uh, our loyal followers of the show, of the um, anniversary party of our customers. Uh, But um, this is an event where you walk in the door, you get 17 cigars when you walk through. Um, Then it's a sit-down dinner, there's music, there's comedy, and then there's like a game show at the end where this year's prize is $35,000. So I'll get deeper into it as the show goes on, but uh, what I thought I'd do this year is actually talk to you about Two Guys Smoke Shop, actually from the outside looking in, basically, of, you know, here is a... uh, a retail store that is a cigar shop and been operating for 35 years um, and maybe tell you about it. have been doing the show all this time and maybe didn't get, get into any of this with you, so I'll tell you about the shop. Um, the first Two Guys Smoke Shop opened in 1985 in Somerville, Massachusetts. Uh, I opened it with my lifelong friend, Paul Antonelli, and I know Paul uh, listens to the show. He's based out of Florida now. Uh, real estate guy. Because it's warm there, Charlie. It's right. That's it. And uh, Paul was in the video store business. He owned a video store called Video Barn. And he, I think he was the first one in Boston to end up doing it. And he actually asked me if I wanted to open this business with him. And I knew nothing about the video business. And uh, he shows me this big giant box and he puts a tape in and the thing, a movie shows up and I think it was Superman and he shows me and he freeze frames it and he rewinds it. And I'm like, wow, this is unbelievable. How much this of this is VHS, VHS in the 80s? Yeah. Was it VHS or was it beta? Because beta was still big in the early maybe, 80s. Maybe, maybe. He was the first guy. And I said, well, how does somebody, you're going to rent the videos? And he said, yeah. I said, well, who owns the machine? He said, I'm going to rent those too. And it turns out that he actually rented the movies to rent them. That's how it was at the early mm-hmm. days, too. So I thought about it. I looked into it the best I could. No internet and back then. You had no. the newspaper clippings and go and, to the library. And I said, there's no way anybody can afford this. And there's no way, you know, I'll help him out, but I'm not going to own this thing because I don't see it doing anything. Eh. So he opens store number one in Somerville, then he opens one in Medford, then he opens one in Reading, and he's booming. Printing money. And the, the amazing thing about this rental thing was people take the stuff, they return it after the weekend, mm-hmm. and he has all his stuff back, and then he rents it again. And I'm like, oh, my God, I blew it. And um, he was so successful that the little store he was in – was going to move to a larger location across the street into what was a supermarket. And I said, what are you going to do with this little teeny building that he had and he owned? 
And he said, I don't know. And I said, how about if we put a little cigar store in it? Because I got nothing to do all day long, and I'll sit here and sell cigars, and it's your, you know, you don't have to worry to rent it. You rent it to us, and me and you will own it together. And he said, okay. So we ended up opening a store together, and he was very busy with his own thing, which was taken off, and I was sitting there waiting for customers to come in. Boy, do I know the feeling once again. <laughs> right. Uh, it went, I went right back into those old <laughs> days lately. And um, after about a year or so, he's booming. He goes, you still doing this? We still doing this thing? And I said, yeah. And he said, this is going nowhere. He said, I want to sell the building and, and move on. And I said, well, I want to keep going. And he said, well, buy the building. I said, I can't do that. So I rented a spot down the street, uh, across the street where he was, but down a little further. He sold the building, and I started Two Guys Smoke Shop up again and took my brother in as my partner who was broke too. And he said, I don't have any money. I said, that's okay. I needed a, a body to work because I was still DJing at nighttime at right. the same time. So uh, I said, I need you. Maybe you'll come in and close the store for a few hours. Get let me get ready to do my night job. So that's how that ended up working. Uh, I was smoking cigars in in the club myself, um, and I like cigars. But frankly, it was it was an oddity of a young guy, twenty five year old guy, smoking cigars. Um, so my customers were old older guys. Um, I was down the street from um, all the gangsters. We were in Somerville at um, Winter Hill, the Winter Hill Gang, if you ever heard of that. Mm -hmm. They were my customers. Thank God I wasn't doing uh, good business because they would have probably took it. And, and mostly you sold Te Amos, right? A lot of Te Amos. <laughs> that was the biggest thing. So because uh, there wasn't there wasn't really cigar geeks back then. It was no guys that smoked cigars by the box, yeah, and beat you up over a nickel, yeah, yeah. Hmm. And it was a not a lot of brands, not a lot of brands that we carried anyway. We didn't buy direct; we bought through wholesalers. And you know, thinking of the cigar brands in those days, what they were, uh, Punch was a big one, Tiamo was a big one, Macanudo Potagus, the legacy stuff. We were talking today earlier, Don Diego. Yeah. I said, oh, my God. Some guy asked for Don Diego, and I said, tell him that, that the 80s want their cigars back. <laughs> I but remember that, was that a, brand. Yeah. 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 So that was a lot of it, and um, I liked it. I liked the customer. I liked smoking cigars in the store. I needed a place to hang out myself anyway all day long. Uh, so I liked it, and I kept doing it. And... Um, after we moved across the street, it turns out I, I'm learning business as I go on, and I was in a couple of different businesses beforehand, but I noticed the change of the business as soon as I moved across the street. A pretty dramatic, it was the sunny side of the street, if you ever heard somebody say the yeah. sunny side of the street. Uh, it was also more people going to work side as opposed to coming home side, seeing us, and... The sales just going across the street grew unbelievably, you know, maybe 50% growth by moving across the street. The same thing happened to us in Salem when we used to be across the street, moved across the street, and we grew 30% that year, and I was much, much larger at that time. So uh, the side of the street made a big difference. It was very, very interesting uh, learning as this went on, but as I saw that the store went better... After about three years into it, I said, you know something? I'm going to go 100% in this. I'm going to quit this nightclub business stuff um, with the DJs and stuff, and I'm going to go all in. So we opened a second location, which is East Boston, and a third location, which was Everett, Everett, Massachusetts, the town I grew up in. And then we had three stores going. And uh, here we are all these years later, three stores, right? It's like what I could possibly manage, I guess, um, is wh where I was at that, at that point. But now we're into 1990. I got 1990. I got three stores going. Um, I'm learning about cigars a lot better than I was. And we were Two Guys Smoke Shop, not Two Guys Cigar Shop. It's Two Guys Smoke Shop and because there were no cigar shops. There were zero places that were called cigar shop. There were things called pipe shops, but there was no cigar shop. You were either a pipe shop or you were a smoke shop. And a smoke shop being all tobacco products, right. and we did carry all of it. By 1990, I was getting more and more into cigars in a big way, 
adding brands, getting into it uh, so much so that we discontinued all products and we went cigars only. And as luck would have it, 1992 comes. There was growth of the cigar industry in 1990, dramatic growth. By 1992, it becomes cigar aficionado, and then it takes off to another level right. at that point. So everything's going good. We're rocking. Business is good. And it's 1995. Every movie that comes out, people are smoking cigars. Every TV show, people are smoking cigars. It was actually in fashion. It was cool. The 30-something crowd was big into it. I was going from 50-year-old smoking cigars to to uh, 30-something people. At that point, I'm 30 years old myself. So the, the younger audience that was coming in was my age. And I took to it big time, and we started dr dramatically growing. And by 1995, um, I, our 10-year anniversary, I started doing, probably by our eighth anniversary, I'm doing uh, these cigar dinners. But by the 1995, I'm putting 500 people in a room. Uh, our... 10-year anniversary was at Hilltop Steakhouse. At the time, the world's largest steakhouse. The event happened on the second floor of it, a function room. Brand new, they built. It was the first event they ever had inside there, and the last time they ever had us back. We put 500 people in there, uh, and we launched the Potagus 150 that day before anybody else. While these things were going on, Massachusetts, or Taxachusetts as we call it, the people that live up here in this area, said, wow, we can start making money off this um, fad, which is what they called it um, five years into it. They're saying it's just a fad, but they decided to start taxing it, and they were going to tax it at a 12% rate over and above everything else that was taxed. There was sales tax on it like there was cigarettes, but we want to tax cigars separately, and I fought for what they wanted, a 30% tax. I fought for it that I want it to be zero, and they said, we're going to go down to 12%. And I said, if you go to 12%, I'm going to be, you're going to force me, 12%, by the way, floor tax also. So if I was sitting on $100,000 worth of cigars, I would have had to pay $12,000 worth of uh, tax. T tax on top of it. And listen, we're, to we're talking 1995. And uh, may would, as well have been $12 million because right. you didn't have it. Yeah. So. They said, we are going to tax it at 12%. The, the, um, the law was going to go into effect on July 1st, 1995. And I said, if you do this, I'm going to pack up my cigars. I, I'll get them out of the state. I'll cross the border with them. And I rented a building to get them out of the state so that I wouldn't be taxed on them. And that was the store across the street from us in the Salem store. And uh, a... Um, teeny chain of three cigar stores goes debunk and a different corporation is set up here in New Hampshire and it's still two guys smoke shop and we start all over again day one and um, Ed Santa Maria who's still with me today 25 years this year with him um, he was an employee with me then his mother was my first employee in the Somerville store and he's with me now 25 years and he came up with me and he's still with me and uh, we said, okay, we're going to have to start all over again. And the wonderful thing that happened, and I'm, I'm hoping this repeats again Monday, is I started after being closed for probably 60 days at that time to rebuild this building. It, it was a, um, a hairdressing place with all kinds of rooms and stuff in it. So everything had to be gutted. The plumbing had to be removed out of it. And everything had to be redone. And we had to put a um, waterfall in there for humidification. The crazy stuff that we did anyway. Um, but we opened the door and there were people lined up. It was unbelievable. And these people that were my customers 30 miles away actually came up and here we were. And I was shocked that, um, okay, we're going to make it, we're going to be okay, and this is where I'm looking at today. What's going to happen on Monday? Are people coming back? Right. Uh, so 12% tax, they said, we're going to test this out. We think we can make $3 million is what they expected to make. Um, 30 stores in the Boston area at the time, and 
they were laughing at me. My competitors over there, they were so happy I was leaving. And I said, uh, my customers are going to follow. I hoped they did, and they did. But the amazing thing that happened is their customers followed also, which I told them if they didn't fight this thing, that was what was going to happen, and that's what did happen. So we grew so unbelievably. In a matter of a year, we were bigger than we were in Massachusetts in the, in the first year. And it just got better and better for us and worse and worse for them because the 12% that they didn't make because I moved out of there and they took my customers with there and some of their customers, they went to 15. They went to 15, expected it to get to 3 million. It didn't. They went from 15 to 20, from 20 to 30, and from 30 to 40% looking for this $3 million, and those stores that were there, 30 of us that were in Boston, one remain. 29 of them went out of business. So it was a big mistake on Massachusetts' part. They made no money, and they put 30 families or however many families that operate out of there, all the employees that they had, out of business, and they got nothing for it. So uh, t today... Uh, Mark's 35 years, a two-guy smoke shop, 25 years in New Hampshire at the same time. So I've been here 25 years in New Hampshire. We, I always talk about the beginnings of Two Guys Smoke Shop of Massachusetts. Uh, it's, it's almost history now because it was a different company when it moved up here, and it's been 25 years of there. So I consider ourselves a New Hampshire company, although we started in Massachusetts. Now it's a whole different game. Uh, we're a cigar shop. We call ourselves smoke shop because that was what it was always called. We have no booze. We have no vape. We have no cigarettes. We sell cigars. We're a cigar store, and we're experts in cigar. That is our specialty. And uh, I certainly couldn't have done it with the incredible staff that we do have. I consider them all cigar experts also. It's not a help yourself type of store. Uh, it never has been. Uh, you come in and you are greeted, and we are hopefully providing you value when it comes in. And I hope that continues when the doors do open, that people start coming back in the stores. And what I'm hoping that happens is that you missed us, and you come in, and you see the value of what Two Guys Smoke Shop was, including to, and, and that includes your brick-and-mortar store that you're listening and you're somewhere else. You see what the value of your brick and mortar store Absolutely. is. Is this going to be a horrible thing that they see, or is there going to be? Is it possible this is the best thing that ever happened to us? That we now get to see our customers see that what we were all about. You miss us, we miss you, but do you miss us and, and miss the camaraderie of the cigar shop and miss the events and promotions and and the friendships and things that you built there? I hope you missed it, and I hope we all go back to it. And what looks like the worst thing that ever happened to us became the best thing that ever happened to us. We'll see, and I'll report back as time goes on there. But um, that is what Two Guys Smoke Shop is and what, what it's all about. Um, to give you a reference of 1985, um, what happened in 1985, where were we? Where were you? Uh, back to the future, the movie. Back to the future. Uh, we are the world. Remember that song, I We do. Are the World? That yeah. was 1985. Um, the first artificial heart, 1985. The Academy Awards uh, for Best Picture, um, Amadeus. Remember the movie Amadeus? No. You don't even remember it. That, that was 1985. WrestleMania. Hell yeah. First WrestleMania, Madison Square Garden, 1985. Coca-Cola, changes to New Coke, 1985. Ooh. Big mistake. Big it was mistake. a failure. Three months later, <laughs> that was gone, but Two Guys Smoke Shop is still here. Um, the Discovery Channel, 1985. Really? I watch that all the time. 1985. Um, Live Aid, the pop concert um, from London and Philadelphia. That happened, 1985. The first smoking ban. I get into the cigar business. <laughs> the first smoking ban ever. Happens in 1985. California, right? Uh, Aspen, Colorado. Wow. Aspen, Colorado. Legal, first place to legalize pot. First person to stop the, do the smoking ban. Weird. Pete Rose became, becomes uh, all-time leader, hitting leader in Major League Baseball. Yeah. 
Still not in the uh, still not in the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. There's an argument for both ways. Here we go. Uh, Super Mario Brothers is released in Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, buddy. 1985. Steve Jobs resigns an Apple computer and founds Next. Any XT? Mm-hmm. Uh, Cold War. Uh, U.S. Ronald Reagan and Soviet uh, Gorbachev meet for the first time, and uh, Mafia boss Paul Castellano. Is shot dead in front of Spock's Steakhouse, and John God- Gaudi becomes the Gambino crime family leader. 1985. And Two Guys Smoke Shop opens its doors for the first time. Castellino was a cigar smoker. There we go. Castellano, rather. Castellano. Yeah. So uh, just to give you an idea of 1985, where, were, where was I? What was going on? And at that time in the world, I say, let me open up a cigar shop. And here it is. We have the cigar shop, and my cigar's out. But uh, well, you made cigar. the right choice not going in the video business because that's a business that's now dead. Yeah, you know, back then it was hundred dollars to buy a movie. Now you can buy them for twenty four dollars on DVD. So there's yeah. no need to rent them. No need to. No reason to buy a DVD. No, everything's streaming. Yeah. Uh, no, that um, believe me, it was high tech then that the movie came. In, you know you. Put a tape in, like you'd you'd put a cassette tape in and hear music. You put a you put a giant cassette in and you saw the movie, which was so weird yeah. uh, that that would happen. But uh, um, Man, certainly at the time, I blew it because there became blockbuster video, the, which is actually the big guy taking down the little guys. That's 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 what happened in that. You game. had to have a pencil nearby, right, in case you had to fix the tape. You stick it in there. Yeah, and the, rewind be kind, it. rewind. Be kind, rewind. Yeah. And, remember that. And in addition <laughs> to that, because your VHS player was so expensive, you didn't want to waste. The rewind feature, so you'd have a, a rewinder rewinder. Yeah. that you could put in, and all it did was rewind. Yeah, it had one in the shape of a car. You would hit it, and the hood would open up, and you slide the tape <laughs> and, in. And you made copies of movies so that you, you yeah. well, had a- you know, people that really were well off had two VCRs, so you could copy the movie that you rented. Then afterwards, they had a two VCR unit, mm-hmm. so you could put the blank in. And- yeah. Imagine that's all gone. Go that on. that industry was so big. And somebody had said to me, when I opened in 85, I heard from the reps and they said, listen, kid, you made a big mistake. You missed it. Like I missed the 60s. They were gone. <laughs> and that's when cigars were big. <laughs> and I said, well, I like it. You know, I don't care. I like it. <laughs> and I want to do it. And um, as luck would have it, man, all of a sudden... Well, it became artisan. It became something that you could geek out about with limited editions coming in. I think probably limited edition well, type w- stuff saved the cigar no, industry and added the, the geek factor. That stuff came out after the boom happened, and, and we got creative new people that got into the cigar industry, and they brought some of their expertise, which was very interesting because you had hardcore cigar companies the old school, this is the way they did. Mm-hmm. And the next generation comes in, and these people were looking for a buck, and they were trying a different way around it. And they did find, they did diff- interesting things that the old guys ended up taking on. They did stupid things, and companies went under, mm-hmm. but they did some smart things. And the old-time farmer guy that was making cigars ends up seeing these guys having success, and they start with limited releases and mm-hmm. different shapes and different things that end up happening. What an interesting rock that this has been over 35 years of the uh, the evolvement of the cigar industry. I would say in the past 35 years or the past 30 years because the the first 10 the first 5 didn't do anything from 1990 to now in this 30 years more things have happened to an old industry than ever happened before. It's the cigar industry but oh my god the different things that end And that's up- that's true right now with the whole world, everything. Running is different. Football is different. Baseball is different. It, it, uh, your approach to training, different. Diet is different. Yep. Well, at one company, I mean, these guys have been in business 125 years. The 125 folks at Diamond Ground. years. But they came out with it. They've always been known for innovation, but their innovation wasn't flash in the pan, limited edition. I mean, this Bellicoso, double Bellicoso, whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. Uh, has been out before. Every couple of years, they release it with a three pack. That's the only way you can get it. They they have made their innovation for the masses. Cellophane. It's a boy. It's a girl. Oh, yeah. Cigars. They did so much. 
They did so much. Uh, and, and we're talking now four generations of what it is. What I love so much is the history of J.C. Newman. Yeah. You, you've been with me I've through been it. many times. And their plan was to actually be open now is the new museum that's there and to launch their, their 125th and to this whole thing. And this whole thing ends up uh, pushing them back, too. I can't wait to go down there and see the change that, yeah. that they have. Uh, they're rolling cigars in that factory again. Um, they, the machine maids are ma made there too. There's so much that's, that's happening with this company um, over 125 years, 125 years. When I think about myself, though, you know, as we did the little video this morning, right? Yeah. I'm celebrating uh, 35 years, and then here's 125 years. Like, yeah, it makes you look wah. like a chump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did... A lot of things in 125 years. Even recently, the American? Yeah. Everybody else is going, and, and what a great time to have that cigar in their portfolio, the American, mm. when we need it the most. People, by and large, are going to be shifting their buying habits, I think, to American-made, and there's something that's 100% American-made. So what do you, first off, this is a 54 ring gauge. They made this whole line as a 54 ring gauge because there's a five tobacco blend in here, and they couldn't pull it off. Yep, seven Without doing total. that. And it was ridiculous when it came out. Mm -hmm. It was so odd that it was a 54 25 years ago. And the whole line was 54s. And all called Robustos. And, <laughs> and Shade Wrapper. Right. On top of it, you know, a lot of people don't make the bigger ring gauges in the, in the mm -hmm. shade because it's got to be able to withstand all that tobacco that's inside. Right. Moisture gets in, an expansion and that. When this came out, I loved this cigar. I went crazy for it. This this was it was probably my first loved cigar. That I love this cigar, and here it is, twenty five years later. I still love this cigar. It's a great cigar. You're looking for something in my palate. This is the type of thing, and they, and they make um, Julius Caesar's more medium. Yeah, their Maximus is exactly what it sounds like. It's maximum flavor, which is my favorite Diamond Crown. I yeah, the Maximus. It's more I, in my wheelhouse. Yeah, but I like the Julius Caesar. That little perfecto. Yeah, the 1895 Ooh. perfecto. That's, yeah, a, that's a special Real cigar. double perfecto. Yeah, and they got the black diamond. But this is the workhorse. I would guess that this is the workhorse of, of the line, Without right? question. Box of 15, another oddball thing that they did. Uh, box of 15 when everybody was doing 25s, 25 years ago. Yeah. They weren't even doing 20s. People were doing 25s, and they say, box of 15. It was a relatively expensive cigar at the time. Uh you know what? The industry caught up to this. <laughs> yeah. It was an expensive cigar at the time, and it's not anymore. The industry caught up to the pricing of and, what this and is. And the ring gauge. Right. <laughs> right. They were ahead of time. They were ahead of time. They got a great cigar here. Um, Are we looking to do the whole first hour without any breaks? Or? <laughs> All right. Let's take a break. When we come back, uh, we've been doing the anniversary dinners for Two Guys Smoke Shop since our eighth anniversary in 1993 because someone wouldn't invite me to theirs. So I did it on spite. I'll tell you who, when, what, where, and why, and all about that and more when we come back. We're live from the Toscano Cigar Sound Stage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. To some, tradition is a catchphrase. To us, it's a guiding light. For there can be no great future without reverence for the past. Hammer and Sickle Tradition Series cigars are handmade, employing only time-honored methods. Meticulously crafted of individually selected tobaccos, Tradition Series is a blend of three-year-aged Dominican Viso and Lijero, all finished inside a breathtaking five-year-aged Connecticut shade wrapper. Tradition Series from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. America's favorite love story takes on a modern zeal with this A.J. Fernandez collaboration. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta, crafted in Esteli, Nicaragua, is a contemporary take on the rich and robust profile of the Romeo by Romeo collection. This exceptional premium offering employs an aged San Andreas wrapper considered one of the most flavorful leaves used in today's premium cigar market. Handcrafted in Nicaragua by cigar master A.J. Fernandez, full-flavored, dressed in a stunning San Andreas wrapper, rich in bold profile with notes of dark chocolate, spice, and licorice, and available in four sizes, Robusto, Toro, Pyramid, and Short Magnum. 
competitively priced under $10. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number no. 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lighting up the Diamond Crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10 count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy. The Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth-generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. If some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacalera Palmer, has produced the cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Piloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing pot. La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. Hi, this is Nestor Miranda from Miami Cigar and you are listening to the Cigar Authority. Here we go, the Cigar of the Year, the Nesta Miranda. That's right. We're back. We're smoking the Diamond Crown, and we're celebrating 125 years of the J.C. Newman Company, 25 years of Diamond Crown. 
the 35th anniversary of Two Guys Smoke Shop and the reopening of all Two Guys Smoke Shops this Monday from the coronavirus shutdown. Will that be what it's known as, the coronavirus shutdown? I think you can probably coin that phrase right now. All right, that's it. It came from me. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. I I got an interview question for you. Why do you do so much of your stuff out of spite? <laughs> He's Italian, because uh, and I'm saying this because D- and David knows why I'm saying it. it. Is a, it's a strong motivator. For I me. won't get into details, but he and I walked around. We had a conversation earlier in the week, and we po- I pointed out a couple of things and asking questions, and he goes, "Yeah, that was out of spite. That was out of spite. That was out of spite." <laughs> so it's a thirty th- things. It, it's a terrible word to say because it sounds so negative, but it's out of uh, opportunity. Um, there's a problem, and here's the answer to it. You get so pissed it, off. I get pissed off. You don't like to hear no. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's all true. It's all true. But but it's it's more of that that we have a problem. Let's come up with a solution to it. And um, that's how the whole anniversary party thing started. So 1984. I'm not even in the cigar business. The year before I got in the cigar business, Henry Schwaston. General manager of the Ritz Carlton Hotel in Boston. He puts together the first ever annual cigar smoking dinner. Black tie, the most unbelievable food, the most unbelievable wine, and the most unbelievable cigars. And here it is. I'm a cigar smoker. I hear about this thing and I want to go. What is this all about? I got to be part of this thing. I'm in Boston. I'm into this thing. I'm thinking of doing a cigar store. I got to go to it. I want to see what it's all about. Inside Ritz Carlton. This is where this thing happens. They don't let me go. Uh, sold out. You can't. They're looking at the, all their premium customers. Or who the hell knows what it is? It's black tie. Who am I? Forget it. They don't let me in. I mean, did you really even have a tux or you were going to have I would have rented room? it. I would have rented it. Well, he was a DJ at the time. He probably had some I, I had nice a, clothes. I had a tux Sure, but I would have had to go, and I would have got the. He had the tuxedo T-shirt. Is what <laughs> he had. That's he came to the Ritz Carlton yeah. in a tuxedo T-shirt. And he yeah. probably used to watch Tennessee Tuxedo. I did. I, I did. Um, so I tried to go. They wouldn't sell me a ticket. I couldn't go. So a year later, I owned Two Guys Smoke Shop, and, and I this I, man can hold a grudge like no one I've ever yeah. met in my life. So a year later, I owned Two Guys Smoke Shop. Now I figure. My name is out there. I'm the owner of Two Guys Smoke Shop, and I want to apply to go as a member. As a member, as, as a, not a guest. You had to pay a ticket, and I think it was mm-hmm. a lot of money for a ticket. And David Garofalo, Two Guys Smoke Shop, is looking for a ticket now. No, I get a no. And I did it for a few years. Strike two? Yeah. So I'm now, like, okay. Now, were the other smoke shop owners all getting tickets, or you don't know? I know for sure one of them was. Was that one of the big ones? Yeah. Yeah. So I try again. I try again. I can't get in there. And by 1993, I stopped asking. And I started my own out of spite. Yeah. Or out of, they wouldn't let me in. So maybe that's not, a, not the right word. That was. Oh, quite, it's the right word. Yeah. You were pissed. <laughs> but it was quite a few years. It took time to build that level of spite. Well, I, and he I would, goes so fast now. Yeah. <laughs> he goes so fast. <laughs> He's got experience. <laughs> I'd say by, by 93, we were the biggest cigar store. Even though I had older cigar shops and, and better locations and things like that, I was marketing the hell out of us. We were on it. Tongues of every, the tips of everybody's tongue. We were promoting ourselves like nobody else, and I just couldn't believe that they still said, "Oh no, every every spot's empty." I'm, I'm thinking to myself, "You should be honored for me to end up going." I'm, I'm cigars in Boston. It's me, and they wouldn't let me in. So I started Two Guys Smoke Shops, Gentleman Cigar Smoker, and I still have the the flyer from it. And everything um, was the first one, and you actually had to be a man to go. You had to be a, a gentleman. gentleman. A gentleman. You sexist mm-hmm. bastard. Yes. <laughs> I pulled it off for a couple of years like that, but I did run into a problem. After the first year became the problem. The first year happened, and the first year was at the Bon Saison in Everett, directly across the street from our Everett location. The guest speaker was Boston Celtics former coach and then president of the Boston Celtics, well-known cigar smoker and customer, Red Auerbach. And um, I got him as the speaker at the event, 
and we all we got known at that point of we're going to give away prizes at it, and the prize, the grand prize, was a box of weedy cereal. That was the grand prize. So those people that say, oh, you give automobiles out and all this stuff, I'm a little cigar shop, I can't do it. First prize was a box of weedy cereal. On the box of weedy cereal was Red Auerbach, and it was only one box, and he came in, he signed the box of weedy cereal, and at the end of the night, so everybody didn't ask him for autographs, keep it, you know, because he didn't want to do it. He said, I'm not going to stand there and sign autographs all day. Okay, one autograph. Box of weedy cereal with his picture on it, and that was the prize that night. Um, the event was great. It was jam-packed. Um, I, I believe we were doing two or 300 people. Do you uh, remember who won it? I don't. You don't. I don't. Uh, our second one, 1994, was Joke and Smoke with comedian Jimmy Tingle. <laughs> ah. Uh, that, that didn't go so well with the comedian. No, huh? because he changed his routine that day. <laughs> <laughs> he became a political comic that day. Yeah. Newscaster Mike Bonacle, who's still out there, um, and baseball legend Johnny Pesky mm. uh, attended there. I got lots of pictures of that. And after two years... Uh, we had to get rid of the gentleman cigar smoker. I got actually letters in the mail, not emails in those days, letters in the mail. How can you do this? You know, you got to let us in, blah, 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 blah. So uh, our 10th anniversary, we just called it the uh, Two Guys Smoke Shop 10th anniversary party and from did, from gentleman cigar smoker to 10th anniversary party. Did a lot of women go that year? Probably a dozen or so. Okay. Uh, of maybe three, four hundred people, mm -hmm. however many people we had. I think it was 300 people. I Somebody have. asked me who Johnny Pesky was, uh, Boston Red Sox player. Yeah, Pesky uh, Pole. Yeah, the foul pole in the right field corner is named the Pesky Pole. Because that's where he hit the ball. Yep, he always got it right inside the uh, the foul line. Yeah. Good guy, cigar smoke, Tiamo. He used to buy Tiamos all the time. Did. So these were people that were customers, and I said, how can I utilize a customer uh, Mike Bonacle was a customer, and uh, n none, of, none of them were free, by the way. You know, right. fair is fair that they were somebody, so what's it going to call? Hopefully give me a good deal or whatever, but we would get them to uh, be the celebrity at it. And this is uh, years before the term cigar celebrity had been coined. Many years, way. many years. So the, the people, the celebrities I was getting were celebrity people as opposed to turning the cigar guy into the celebrity. But the cigars were a main focus of these things. I mean, we would announce what the cigars were as big as, as the, uh, the cigars were the celebrity, and the celebrity was the celebrity, but not the people in the cigar industry were not the celebrities by then. So the 10th anniversary um, is, becomes the first one that's called the 10th anniversary. The other ones were our anniversaries, but they were not promoted that way. Um, Not to mention, how awkward would it be if you called the 8th anniversary the 10th anniversary? It would be very confusing. Confusing. Uh, it was at Hilltop Steakhouse. Hilltop Steakhouse um, was the largest steakhouse in the world at the time. They had a new function room, and it was us. And we launched Potagus 150 a couple weeks before the whole world launched Potagus 150 because of my connection I had with Edgar Cullman, who was doing it. And it was my 10-year anniversary. And I said, Edgar, it would be a big deal if you would do this to let us do it. We had done two promotions with him in advance of this, which was Cigar the Horse. If anybody remembers a horse, the name of the horse yes, was Cigar. Sure. It was the winningest horse of all time. We did two races that were in Boston with him, the first one where he was hardly not known at that time, and we gave 2,000 cigars away for the first 2,000 people that showed up at the track. The second time that horse was there, it was a big, big deal. Actually, the, it was the police escorted the horse to the track. It was a big deal. And um, so the 10th anniversary, a big deal that we ended up having, and at that point was our last time in Boston. That's when we moved from Boston to New Hampshire right after that. And we continued the tradition from that day forward. And it was always doing some sort of big prize. Um, and over the years, we've done things like Harley Davidson motorcycles three different times. Uh, tank a truck full of gasoline during the gas crisis. That was a big deal for us. Um, 
the Hummer H2 for our 20th anniversary was cost me $75,000 for that car. Mm. We decaled caled it all up with the cigar brands on it, and that car is still on the road today. Uh, Same guy owns it. Yep. Mm. And he just bought a table for this year's uh, right, event. Right. Yep. Um, lots of automobiles, including a DeLorean, where we themed it for Back to the Future. We did a Trans Am for Smokey and the Bandit. The uh, Cadillac Escalade for the... Um, it was like an old time thing. Cadillac we did Eldorado. Was Which it is not? Cadillac? Yeah, Escalade is what I drive. <laughs> it's used to drive. Used yeah. to drive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was Virgin in every way. You yes, remember this? It was. It was you do remember? It. Yes, I do. <laughs> the tubes still plays thirties music. Yeah. Uh, Mercedes Rolls Royce Silver Spur for our twenty fifth anniversary with two hundred and fifty minted. Silver bars inside of it. So a picture of one of those on social media yeah. this week. And we even did an MMA fight, mixed martial art fight when mis- mixed martial arts was was new and hot. And the big deal for that one was who he landed as the DJ. Who would that be? Me. Huh. And I don't know if I call it a DJ. You were more than a DJ at it. You were doing the sound for everything. Yeah, smoke, confetti. Hmm. Um, you know, 3,000 seat arena that we only got 50% capacity sold. Hmm. We, I lost over $50,000 that <laughs> night. Painful. But so, I, but I got to know Mr. Jonathan. He Did told you? me that he would have tipped me if he had made just $1. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, listen, I, I'm going to say this, that a lot of people did the wrong things at that. And one person did the right thing, and it was Mr. Jonathan. He didn't work for me. He was a contracted guy that came in, and he did everything he said he was going to do and more. It was the only one. It was my only salvation, the only person I didn't run up to that night yelling and screaming. So you probably said, what a nice guy. He doesn't even yell and scream. (laughs) Then you got to know me. Thanks, Ed. Things you know. Remember that thing on <laughs> that used to be on? That was in 80s things, too. It used to play something like that. Now you know. Was it now you know? And now you know. So this year, 35-year anniversary, tickets on sale today. The top prize is $35,000. So what do you get for your $225 ticket? Seems like a lot of money. Seems it, you know. So you're going to a cigar dinner, and it's $225. Well, first off, the prize is $35,000. When you walk in the door, you get 17 premium cigars. You're going to get a Aganosa Leaf, an Aging Room, an Aladino, an Atabay. This is alphabetical order. A Davidoff, a Diamond Crown, a CLE, out of order. Hammer and Sickle, because it was going to be a Roa, and they changed ah, it to CLE last mm. minute. Hammer and Sickle, Jose Dominguez. Christoph, La Flor Dominicana, Nesta Miranda, Padron, Perdomo, Recluse, Rocky Patel, and United Cigar. So I've already recouped most of the ticket price. There's your money back walking through the door. Then you're going to have a cocktail hour with hors d'oeuvres. Then you go from that room after we've destroyed it. We go into another room all clean and nice again, and we have a sit-down dinner. And the sit-down dinner is going to be an antipasto, chicken parmesan, veal marcella, um, with ziti and all the fixings and things are there, and dessert and coffee. And, and they do great food over they do, there. They do great food. They make everything from scratch. All you can eat. And oh, yeah. the, it, they do it family style, so you're not sitting there waiting for them to serve 400 people. It's, it's serving at yeah. the table. Very, very good. And we say 400 people. It used to be 500 people. It always was 500 people since we've been using the boroughs, which is a lot of years. But uh, this year, we're knocking it down to 400 people because, frankly, I didn't think we were going to be able to sell 500. I'm probably wrong because we are at 250 tickets sold now. So we got 150 tickets left to go, and we're only a few hours in. Um, there'll be a comedian, Joey Yannetti, kid I grew up with years ago from East Boston. And um, we have music, and then we have a game show. It's an elimination of groups of people that are there. You get a group, and you represent one of the cigar brands that are there, and we trickle it down till we get to the last group. Then we trickle that down till we get to the last guy, and the last guy gets $35,000. Or 
I try to buy these people out as time goes on. Um, so you, you'll see, you, you got to go to see how it plays. I can say it any way I want. I, I've done it to many people, and then they show up, and they go, oh, now I get it. So I can never tell the story. It's like trying to tell someone how to ride a bike until yeah. you do it. So uh, showing up at the event is the biggest names in the cigar industry. That, that I'm so honored that they do it because typically – Cigar manufacturers don't like to do events with other manufacturers. Yeah, there's no multi-vendor events. They're not a fan of yeah. that. Yeah, so it's called multi-vendor mm -hmm. event, but it's a different type of event. And I'll tell you, they laugh with each other. It's great camaraderie that ends up happening. There's no selling going on. There's right. nothing for you to buy. You've already bought your ticket, and that's where it ends right there. But uh, right. joining us this year, it, yeah. you've usually got uh, one at each of the tables, so yes. it's a good chance to sit and have yeah. dinner with one of them. Yep, they don't sit together. They nope. sit at a table by themselves. So when you go and you say, oh, I feel like sitting with Terrence Riley, and there's Terrence Riley. I'm going to sit at that table. Sit where you want to sit or get a whole table at 10, which will be reserved with your name on it, and the person that they'll sit with is you. Terrence, you. Terrence Riley really needs to borrow your Floby. I don't know if you've seen a picture. A of everybody's him out of out of control. Get the Floby, and and step it up. Absolutely, you'll be, you'll be happy you did. Um, Rafael Nadell, who you said is listening to the show, Rafael yeah. will be there. He listens every week. Um, Husto Aroa is going to be there. Nelson Alfonso is coming in. Johan Swan will be representing Davidoff. Eric Newman from Diamond Crown. You know, his brother Bobby always says he wants to go, and Eric, they, they take turns doing things. <laughs> they have, yeah, they have, they have certain events that they right. signed up for Eric, Eric years stole ago. This one, huh? Eric said, Eric said, I'll do the two guys one, and Bobby said, okay, I'll do this one, and now they're stuck. They, can, they never flip-flop because yeah. Eric won't give it up. He won't give it up. Bobby says it to me every time I see him. And we, we were supposed to, hopefully, we were going to have Eric up here this week to right. celebrate and have him on the show. And but instead, the first hour is going to be an hour and a half long. We're not going <laughs> to even have to do an after show after this. Christian Aro is going to be there. <laughs> Eric Wentworth will be there with Hammer and Sickle. Jose Dominguez will be there. Um, Jared Trudeau representing Christoph Cigars will be there. Lito Gomez is coming. Nesta Miranda is coming. George Padron is coming. Nick Perdomo is coming. Um, Scott Weeks from Recluse Cigars is coming. Nish Patel will be there representing Rocky Patel. Nish has never been to a show, I don't believe. It's usually Rocky, but Rocky had to be in Germany at that show, but that looks like it may be postponed or something, so mm -hmm. who, who knows, knows how, how that's going to go. And Oliver Nouveau from United Cigar, and that will be... Um, the people that are going. If you want a ticket to it, it's two hundred and twenty-five dollars. Um, you can call triple eight two cigar two triple eight two cigar two. Or if you don't have those numbers on there, it's eight 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 two two four four two seven two. And uh, Ed Santa Maria is going to be listening up till two o'clock for phone calls to happen. Uh, other than that, uh, during the week you can call uh, Barry if there's any tickets left. I was going to say you have no problem getting tickets, but there's 150 tickets left. This, this, this it's going to sell out. Yeah, and some people buy them ten at a time. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm so happy. Uh, you know, this was one of those years that this crazy thing's going on, and I know it's September, but people are concerned about it. One person that bought a table said to me, "What if it's not going to happen?" Well, of course we're going to give you your money back. I've been around for 35 years. I plan on being around for another 35 years, so I'm not going anywhere. Your money is safe with me. You need to buy a ticket if you want to go. Um, at the end of it, um, you know, it becomes the hottest ticket in town that people are, you know, trying to get tickets afterwards. And it looks to me like that that's what's going to happen uh, today. So uh, that's the details of it. Give me the details on Diamond Crown. Very smooth. I'm, uh, you've been doing all the talking, yeah. so I've been smoking. But uh, there's there's few cigars where I can say to you, yeah, this is buttery. This is buttery. It's great. Like yeah, butter, there's but, a butter on a pop tart. 100 percent butter not, on a pop tart. It's not, it's not that at all. Maybe a vanilla pop tart, <laughs> not a strawberry top tart, but well, a, the one where it has the frosting on the top. Have you ever put butter on a pop tart? It's so freaking good. There's no pop tart. <laughs> you guys just say that so that Ed Sullivan plays the drop. There's no pop tart. I'm also getting a little bit of a uh, salted sunflower seed. You know when you're just chewing on. Oh, the you shell. know those sunflower seed 
Pop tarts. tarts. That's you put butter on all the time. It's, there's a buttery that is. pop tart cookie component, but there's also a little salted sunflower seed. This, this is my, my perfect relaxation type cigar. No harshness to it. it very, very aged. Very, very smooth. Very, very nice. Uh, right up my alley. This is what I like. All right. When we come back, I got a deal on Diamond Crown where you're going to be able to get the cigar. We're going to light up a very special Diamond Crown celebrating the 125th anniversary of Diamond Crown. I wish they were here, but we're going to celebrate with them anyway. Uh, we have lots to celebrate and lots more to talk about. We're live from the Toscano Cigar Soundstage, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Are you a member of the Cigar Authority Care Package? Well, if not, the time, my friend, is now. For just $24.99, you'll get four premium cigars delivered to your door each month. And we'll smoke each one of those cigars on the Cigar Authority Podcast with you. I don't know if that's really a benefit. Sure it is. We will judge the construction, flavors, and review the cigars, and you can see how right or wrong we really are. You might be surprised. Four premium cigars delivered to you for $24.99, and you can quit any time, but you won't. The value is incredible. Want to take the Cigar Authority Care Package to the next level? Sign up or upgrade to the Cigar Authority Care Package Prime. For just $5 more, you get an extra cigar and usually something special. That's five cigars each month, all different. Find the Cigar Authority Care Package on thecigarauthority.com and sign up today. The Cigar Authority Care Package. Aging Room 4 Nicaragua Maestro. Named Cigar Aficionado's number one cigar of the year with a 96 rating, is a complex Nicaraguan puro carefully blended by Rafael Nodal and made by A.J. Fernandez. As Cigar Aficionado described it, every puff is an overture of flavors that's at times heavy and rich with notes of dark chocolate and wood, and other times subtle and understated with hints of fine caramel and toasted almonds. Treat yourself to an aging Room 4 Nicaragua today. Surgeon General work. Tobacco smoke increases the risk of lung cancer and heart disease, even in non-smokers. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world, from exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of cigar science basics this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast or better yet passionado cigar journal covers cigars in the u.s and around the world and is printed right here in the usa you owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine cigar journal available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website cigarjournal.com that's cigar journal Com. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th anniversary as the Decade on Steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar 
for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tobacco Lera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder, and the filler made up of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full-bodied, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at Better Cigar Shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father, Julio Eiroa, are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa Tobacco Farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old-school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop-to-shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. This is Eric Newman from the J.C. Newman Cigar Company and you're listening to The Cigar Authority. There he is, celebrating 125 years, J.C. Newman, and Two Guys Smoke Shop celebrating 35 years for a brick-and-mortar retailer to be around 35 years. That's another milestone, too, and we're opening on Monday, opening and letting people walk in our store. Isn't that going to be unique and different and easier yeah. for us? Yes, it will. Uh, for years, I always worried about people coming in with masks in the store. Now it's <laughs> mandatory. <laughs> It's crazy times, crazy. It's going to be interesting going to the bank this week because <laughs> we have to wear a mask and open carry. Do we have to open carry? <laughs> I don't think it's required. No, it's not required. <laughs> Doing it anyway. Uh, it'll be interesting. So uh, I have a unbelievable, beautiful cigar in its own little uh, coffin is the word we use. I hate the word um, saying it because we're in the tobacco business. But what do we Personal have cigar carrier. Okay. Today's second cigar is the Diamond Crown Cameroon Select, manufactured in the Dominican Republic for J.C. Newman Cigars. The size that we're about to light up is six and three quarters by 54. It's a number 10 double bellicoso. And it features a Cameroon wrapper over a believed Dominican binder with five different fillers from Central America. Why believe? Because it's not officially a- announced anywhere, ah. but it's believed that it's a Diamond Crown blend with a Cameroon wrapper. Only. Only. That's what it's believed to be. Uh, its cigar price is priceless because it's only available through a special promotion, which we're going to tell you how in a little while to get it from twoguyscigars.com. So what's the ring gauge on this now? 54. So it is a 54. It seems thinner. It's optical illusion because the, the wrapper's darker. And the, because it has a... Darker is slimming. It has a torpedo point on it. Double bellicoso. How do you get that? Uh, it's longer than a bellicoso. It's like a double corona. Double in length. Yes. Yes. Oh. What I'm thinking of is more of like the short story or the Hemingway bellicoso on both right. ends. Or the 1895 Perfecto by the same company. And, right. Yeah. Yeah. The bellicoso typically has a blunter tip than a torpedo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they have um, the Fuente family has a strong connection with Cameroon as the J.C. Newman does. I think the first cigar ever made using Cameroon might have been something from J.C. Newman. They did so many firsts, it's unbelievable. Fascinating. Can we get the cutting and lighting <laughs> so I can smoke it? Because the w- one and only time I got one of these ever in my life, yeah. I gave it to David because he told me he had never smoked it. 
and now wow. I've smoked three of these. <laughs> My second did he, today. Did he offer me one this no. morning, Ed? No. Here it no. is. I'm offering you one now. No. Everyone else gets one. I didn't get my own special one. That's pretty special. <laughs> it's pretty special. And it's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo, the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. Subtle root beer on the cold drawer. Root beer. Like one of those root beer bottle cap candies. Ah. <clears throat> I'd go root beer barrel. So but I, I agree 100% with Barry. <laughs> I do not. The first cigar we smoked was Care Package. Yes. So everybody smoked that too. So we'll tell you what's different than this, than that. Not bad with the root beer candy. Mm-hmm. Not bad at all. No, Jonathan agreed 100%. Jonathan did not. That was a drop. Some wow. bullshit that with, still a, with, even a li- in there. with a little spice to it too. Um, nutmeg. Mm. Nutmeg. I'm thinking what's the stuff that they put in um, um, yeah. eggnog. Right. So eggnog. You, yeah, root beer eggnog. You take root beer the, eggnog. The the wet root, root, root beer barrel out of your mouth and sprinkle a little eggnog in and yeah, pop put it, it back, back in. And there you go. <laughs> I'll give myself the bell on that because I nailed it. We're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Blizzard. The Vertigo Blizzard features single action. You press the button down, the lid pops open to reveal three jets with double wall protection fueled by the patented Vertigo big ass tank and an easy adjustment wheel at the bottom, all for the low price of $9.99. That's the Vertigo Blizzard. It wasn't a blizzard this morning, but it was snowing pretty hard. There was some big around flakes out there. Around 6.30. Holy mackerel. Yeah, I looked out the window. I turned over to my wife. I told her Merry Christmas. Mm. I said the same thing. Yeah, and then I saw your post <laughs> afterwards. I said Merry Christmas. It's pretty gusty wind out there, too. It yeah. really felt cold. Unbelievable. Is it a record? May 9th? Snowing? Um, there's been May snow in the past, but I think this might be the latest. Wow. Give me everything you got, Mother Nature. I think I think we've had it all, right? Yeah, up in the White Mountain area, they're supposed to get a foot. Now, will the snow kill the murder hornets? Or hopefully, they're not here yet. Anyway, I no. think they're in Washington State right all now. All right, all right. Do they have to wear masks? Yes. Yeah. All right. Good. All right. So uh, let's talk a little about J.C. Newman. I and, and can you I'll do the do, short version for crying out I loud? I am. I'm going to do a short version as a, because I'd rather have them tell us. Um, Jason Newman Cigar Company dates back 125 years ago today, 1895. You see it on their bands, 1895. When Julius Caesar Newman rolled his first cigar in the family barn in Cleveland, Ohio. 1895 created a cigar table uh, with some old boards, borrowed $50 for tobacco, and received his first order for 500 cigars from a family grocer. Those are where cigars were sold in those days. The business had started that day in the barn, as in the family home. Uh, J.C. Newman Company is the first brand. The first brand that they put out was called ABC. Did you know that? I did not know that. Huh? So I tried Learned to add something. something and you yeah. know, the acronym stood for already been chewed. Akron, Bedford, and Cleveland, which was the name of the local streetcar line. They named it after a streetcar, hmm. and they're in Tampa. With the streetcars that are right there in Tampa. And if yeah. they had just done one more letter, could have been named after the streetcar Desire. Oh. Huh, Barons? That's, that's a you it. joke. That's, that's, a, that's a you joke right it. there. <laughs> Julius Caesar Newman was the son, uh, had a son, Stanford Newman. And 25 years ago in 1995, Stanford, the president then of J.C. Newman, launched the Diamond Crown to celebrate J.C. Newman's 100th anniversary. Today, now President Eric Newman, son son of Stanford and grandson of J.C., along with his brother Bobby, have brought in Eric's son, now the fourth generation, celebrating 125 years of Diamond Crown with the number 10, Cameroon, which we have right here. In 1895, there were a total of 40,000 federally licensed cigar manufacturers in the United States. Today, there is one. Four generations, 125 years later, uh, they're still operating, 
and um, founded by the family, and it still does today. So here's what it's going to be. If you want one of these cigars, it's very simple. You buy three Diamond Crowns, mix and match. It doesn't matter which they are, the regular Diamond Crown, the Maximus, the Julius Caesar, or Black Diamond. Black Diamond. Three of them get you one of these. If you buy a whole box, you'll get a Diamond Crown Ashtray and a Diamond Crown Zycar yep. Cutter along with the cigar. The J.C. Newman branded 125th anniversary yes, black and gold ashtray with a J.C. Newman branded 125th anniversary Zycar Butterfly Cutter. Yeah. Better. Sounded better. You cut yeah. butterflies with it? No, but butterflies like that. Oh, right. So it's branded as the 125th. Guaranteed well, to attract more butterflies than murder hornets. So here's the, the story. We are running this promotion in all three of our stores. We have nobody coming in the store, so it's very hard for us. So we said, let's offer it, not online, that it's not there on the website or anything. No. So what you're going to do is... Just for the listeners. If you're going to order a box to get the ashtray cutter and the number 10, or three singles to get just the number 10, Put a comment in, DC Deal, just to make my life easier when I'm processing the orders. Okay. So leave the comment, DC Deal, and we'll take care of the rest. Okay. And if he has any problem that it runs out, he'll I'll, contact I'll you. I'll contact you. So, I, so you're not yeah. stuck that we ran out of it, and we're going to send you the box of cigars you didn't want anyway, or the three <laughs> cigars you didn't want anyway, because it's very possible that it does run, run out, because you know it was just an in-store promotion that we were doing, but we didn't put it online. It's, you're not going to find it on the website. You got to be a cigar authority listener to end up uh, getting this, and we, we will sell out of it. It's just a matter of a day or two, and uh, it'll be gone. It would have been gone in one day if we were open for so, business. Remember when you were kids, you'd go to the bank and they had the lollipops, mm -hmm. the yes. green ones. The green ones. This is the green lollipop. No, it's the dum dums. It, it's the root beer. It's not the dum dum. It's the root beer dum dum. No, it's not root beer anymore. It's the green lollipop from the bank. The green one. It's the green one. I think you're mistaken. Yeah, but the, we, we, yeah, we, yeah which, I don't got been, any lime. Which would have been lime, right? Right. Didn't have any lime Did, flavor. They all tasted the same, except <laughs> you could taste the green. Yeah. <laughs> green number ten. Yeah. yeah, it's green dye. Root beer dum dum. Mm -hmm. It tastes very different than the first Diamond parents. Crown. If it's yes. only the wrapper, it tastes very different. So I, I, I firmly believe this. I have a review going up on Monday for their cigar, but a sneak peek. I think that the Don Carlos and the Diamond Crown did the nasty, and there was a, <laughs> had baby, a baby bee. Yeah, you could just That's say had a baby. Cigar. baby. Did the nasty. <laughs> <laughs> that is this cigar. They fornicated in the doggy-style position. Let's find out. What's up in the cigar world with Barry Stein? It's time for What's, what's up? up in the Cigar World, brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. Every Recluse cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box-pressed and rolled end to bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse cigar today. And the Department of Defense has announced it will no longer sell tobacco products to those under 21 at its installations around the world. So if a 19-year-old is, is serving on an aircraft carrier in the middle of the Indian Ocean... He can't buy any tobacco, but he could put his life on the line. A federal appeals court has ruled against the cigar industry and the FDA. Both parties wanted to push back substantial equivalents to August of 2021. According to the ruling, the agency does not have the right to change the dates. So it currently stands September of this year. They said that before the agency didn't have the right to change the date, and they changed the date. Remember when it was May, the yeah. agency didn't have the right to change the date, and they changed the date. Right. What am I getting wrong here? Am I, it's just confusing it, to me. It, it's <laughs> I'm sure it's confusing to you. It was the same exact argument last time, and then the mm -hmm. date changed. Mm -hmm. And that's what's up in the cigar world. Oh, my goodness. It's uh, unbelievable. Next week, we have uh, Mr. Jonathan Carney joining us here from it's La Florida Dominicana. Anything. It's Mr. Jonathan Carney. Is it true Mr. Jonathan's going to be giving us the meat next weekend? I hear he is. I certainly will. <laughs> I hear he is. He's been doing a lot of meat things, and we're going to... Uh, do that. Uh, Rocky Patel World Championship was going to be the following week. Uh, that has been postponed, but it is part of the Cigar Authority Care Package, so we will do it anyway, and we'll see how far we get. 
amongst ourselves. I'm hoping Barry breaks his uh, former record of 45 seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the cigar goes. He makes on. it to a minute. That's 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 big, Barry. Yeah, it's huge. Okay, and we have a. My wife's uh, always pleased by that. Followed, we have our annual survey coming up. Uh, we're working on the final details on the annual survey, which will be a lot of fun to have also. Uh, and again, if you want to buy the Diamond Crown, if you want this Diamond Crown that we're smoking, the 125th, uh, number 10, you buy any three cigars Diamond Crown. When you check out under the comment section, you put. Diamond Crown deal or DC deal or anything like that to alert Barry that you bought Diamond Crowns and he's going to include uh, one of them. If you buy the whole box, you'll get one of those, one of these cigars along with the J.C. Newman 125th Ashtray and the J.C. Newman Zycar Cutter for free while supplies last. If we run out, we will not process the order. We'll let you know and you can make a decision there. But you're listening to it now. Don't wait at, waste any more time. Just click on the damn thing and just do it. If you want it, because we can't sell it to you. It's not a, a selling thing. I got to tell you, though, the ashtray is gorgeous. Yeah. The black and gold, it looks really nice. Black, black and gold always looks beautiful. Um, all right, let's get uh, into the take a peek into the asylum from our friends at Asylum Cigars. It's time for news from the insane asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true. Or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. Asylum cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars, with sizes ranging from 4 inches by 44 to the absolutely insane 8 inch by 80. Asylum cigars. <laughs> As everyone grows angry from COVID-19, there's been no time for love, and as a result, there's a whole industry that has seen its sales go flaccid. With hookups on the decline, condom sales have gone limp. The soft sales have been attributed to people no longer going on apps such as Bumble and Tinder, or in Mr. Jonathan's case, Grinder. According to Adam and Eve sex toy experts, sales of pocket pussies have been smoked, and that's not only insane, it's asylum. No need of that. But he's proud of himself, too. Yeah. He's proud of himself. It's giddy. Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, update here on Two Guys Smoke Shop's anniversary tickets, $225 a ticket. If you want it, you call 888-2-CIGAR-2 to get your ticket uh, up until the show is over. And then uh, deal with it. Uh, Barry if there's any tickets left. I say any tickets left because we're at 302 tickets sold right now, 302. And as of the last break. Yeah, that so. was 27 minutes ago. Right. 98 left, so it's it's less than that. So we're the countdown has really begun. I'm blown away. I really thought we were going to have a major problem with this. <clears throat> I was guessing we were going to sell 100 tickets today, 100, 150 max. That was the conversation this morning at breakfast. We're mm. at 302 at the break. Um, we could wrap it up today, and it happens in a matter of hours, not days. Wouldn't that be nice? Or if you're listening to this on Monday, how terrible this is for you. You waited too long. Uh, don't wait if you want to come. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And by all means, if there is a problem and this thing is canceled by some crazy reason, of course, we're not going anywhere. We've been doing this for 35 years. You will be refunded, so don't worry about that. Uh, early thoughts here on Diamond Crown, 125th, number 10 Cameroon. I'll tell you, that Cameroon wrapper really is adding a level of sweetness that I just didn't expect. I know you always say Cameroon is sweet, and I've smoked cigars that are supposedly Cameroon, and they don't have this level of sweetness. Well, the interesting thing would be to smoke back-to-back -back the cigar and see what the difference, if the truth is that this is the same blend. To me, I say it's not the same blend. Uh, there's mixed information online. All Some right. people say that's why I said it's believed. It doesn't. To be. It doesn't taste like it's the same. It, there's blend. more strength to it than the original Absolutely. Diamond Crown, but it's Absolutely. not quite as strong as the Maximus. Right. It's a tweener. It's a tweener. Maybe <laughs> it's the same blend as Julius Caesar. No. Nah. With a Cameroon wrapper. No, nah, I don't see that. Maybe it's a love child. Ah. Hey, Don Carlos and Diamond Crown. It's, it's the love child. The love child. <laughs> That's a great name for a cigar. All right. Um, let's take a break. When we come back, um, we'll get to the Don Raphael offer of the day. We have uh, a matchup of the week. We got some things in the mailbag. 
and lots more. The countdown has begun for the two guys' anniversary tickets. We have less than 100 to go. And uh, wouldn't it be nice if we wrapped this up before the end of the show? We'll see. Stick around. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Live from the Toscano Cigar Soundstage, you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider Cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice it's sweet like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding! The Rough Rider Cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range, that's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider Cigars, there's nothing rough about Rough Rider except the name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars in the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Anduyo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Anduyo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donut. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more. It's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. Legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. 
the nearly 175-year-old H. Upman brand in collaboration with storied cigar maker A.J. Fernandez bring a medium to full-bodied, sweetly balanced, and yet complex smoking experience. Boasting an Ecuador Sumatra wrapper, this cigar produces incredible aromas and nuances of sweet spices. Today, almost 175 years later, the legacy of H. Upman lives on a brand new take on an age-old brand. Handcrafted in Esteli, Nicaragua by Cigar Master A.J. Fernandez. Available in four sizes, priced under $9. A legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. This is Christian Eroa from CLE, Asylum, and Eroa. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And we're back. We're smoking the Diamond Crown 125th anniversary cigar, and it's the number 10 Cameroon. We're celebrating 125 years of J.C. Newman, 35 years of Two Guys Smoke Shop, and opening our store back open on Monday. It's going to be a big celebration. Should we smoke something special that for a cigar, or uh, we can't? Because we have to wear masks. That's going to interrupt our cigar smoking. I quit. <laughs> That's cause for celebration. <laughs> we can't be on the floor smoking a cigar. Or could we put a hole in the cigar? In the it mask? defeats the whole purpose, right? I would think. But it's probably not specified. They don't have specs on the mask, right? So on the plane... You have to wear a mask if you go on a plane. JetBlue says you, ha- you must wear a mask. Most person, airlines, yep. Except while you're eating and drinking. Yeah, defeats the purpose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's going to be, okay, everybody's clean. Now we're passing out some well, snacks to you. All right. Everybody. Uh, uh, the two of you are, I'm going to just interrupt here with a little bit of reason. The reason that people have to wear the mask is because of coughing, sneezing, and, and the like. So. You're going to be eating. The likelihood of you coughing while you're eating, except choking. But if you're sick, this is a way that the, the vast majority of people can keep the germs to themselves. So, can you come into two guys and eat a cheeseburger and walk around the store without a mask on? Because I ain't saying anything to anybody that's walking in without a mask. You want to come in and shop? Come in and shop. You have rights guaranteed to you by the Constitution, as far as I'm concerned. Amen. And that is the governing document Amen. that I live my life by. There we go. In the meantime, there's some people out of business and in jail because of it, and this is going to be a whole thing later on. Well, they put you in jail for not wearing the mask, but then they let you go because they don't want you in jail because of the virus, so it all works out. Yeah, and if you're sick and you got the virus, they put you in the nursing home where you get everybody (laughs) in the nursing home sick and they all die. New York screwed up royally with that. Bad move. (laughs) Bad move. Okay, it's time to hear the Don Raphael offer of the day, and that is brought to you by Don Raphael Cigars. Everyone has a price. Would you do this for this much? $500. Everybody can use $500 right now to jump off a 100-foot cliff. Don't worry. The water is that deep. All right. $500. Any, any other restrictions? Am I naked? Is What's, it shock There's a five hundred dollar bonus if you're naked. So mm. it's a thousand dollars to jump off naked. One hundred feet cliff into Can't. water that's at least five hundred, at least five hundred, at least one hundred feet deep. All mm-hmm. right. My other question is: When you say naked, am I allowed to wear shoes and be naked otherwise? No, no, you're not naked. But you can wear shoes, but Hang you get five hundred. So if you don't I get the if I strip all my clothes off and just put my shoes on and go walking down Route Twenty Eight here outside the shop, I'm not going to get a ticket for walking around naked. I don't give tickets out. I'm not going to give a ticket for somebody not wearing a mask nor not wearing any clothes. Just go to the place in Vermont that's clothing but optional. I, thousand bucks, I would do it. Hundred foot cliff, naked to water, naked. That's a hundred feet. Yeah, deep. I'm in. What happens at a hundred? Some, but you're jumping off 100 feet. You're mm-hmm. a mathematician, Ed Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> you hit metric shit ton of force is what happens. The reason I asked about shoes is there is a likelihood of breaking the blood capillaries in the bottoms of your feet when you hit the water because it's so much force. 
you hit whatever the thing is, the, f- the five thing. feet per second or whatever, the mass, you can't fall any faster, you the hit terminal velocity. terminal velocity. You hit terminal velocity. There we go. You end up with a metric shit ton of pressure. So you're feet. doing it. I would do it. But you do it anyway. Yeah, I've done it. Cliff Not di- naked, but I've done it. Cliff divers do it all the time. I mean, how high are they up? They're like at least 80 meters, which is what, 90-something feet? But There's cliff 100. divers... Cliff divers point their fingers when they go into the water. They don't open their wrist because you break your wrist. It's too much pressure on the, from the water. Which is really how I did this. From cliff diving? <laughs> yeah. Jump in the water. water, water left? No. <laughs> There's a water shortage now. I got a fear of heights and open spaces, so I'm out. The answer is you wouldn't do it, right? I'm no. in. You break There's your legs. A G note? Psh, I've done 100 feet. You've done 100 feet? Yeah. Into water how far deep? It was deep enough. You, there was a crane buried in the water. You could see it. So it was more than 100 feet deep, but there was just water was 100 feet deep. You you don't go 100 feet because you jump off of 100 feet. That would be saying that water has the same viscosity as air. It doesn't. You you go down 10, 15 feet. That's it. doesn't even take that long to resurface. The answer is you don't do that because you're going to break your legs $500. Or $1,000. Your piece of dealer. If you, eh, so, piece of dealer is going to be so, fun. Yeah, it says if you jump from uh, 20 feet, 6 meters above the water, you'll hit the water at 25 miles per hour. The impact is strong enough to compress your spine, break bones, or give you a concussion. Yeah, I'm just trying to get kids not to jump off cliffs. I've done it a million times. Well, you have to enter feet first, Correct. straight, in a vertical line. Yeah, I've done that. What if you didn't? 500, you're out of your mind. You I did it for it. free. You won't eat a Twinkie, for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the Twinkie's name. <laughs> so uh, here's the ashtray. People wanted to see the ashtray. Those that are watching on YouTube or Facebook Live that see this mess, you can see the uh, beautiful J.C. Newman 125th ashtray and the Zykar cutter, along with the uh, little uh, case that the single cigar comes in. That's what you get, and you do it by by go to twoguyscigars.com, order any three Diamond Crown singles. It's the Diamond Crown Classic, Maximus, Julius Caesar, or the Black Diamond. And uh, you order three of those, you're going to get the number 10 for free. If you do the box, which is the better deal, you're going to get the Zycar Butterfly Cutter with the J.C. Newman 125th logo and the ashtray that has the same logo. And uh, the cigar. And the cigar. And your discount on the box. And your discount on the box. But, but what you want is the cigar. So either way, uh, do it, and um, we'll get it to you while supplies last under the... Um, comment thing, put Diamond Crown deal or something like that to alert Barry so that he makes sure it gets in there. And if we run out, he'll contact you and say, we ran out of them. Do you still want it? It's fair. Right? Yeah. That's that's the best we can do. Okay. It is time for the matchup of the week. Brought to you by VS. VS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair. Victor Sinclair Cigars is the matchup of the week. Would you rather have Edible spaghetti as hair that regrows every night or sweat, not sweet, sweat, maple syrup. So you ate your own hair and it was made out of spaghetti. Spaghetti Now your body, your body had to use energy to grow that spaghetti hair. So... You're going to eventually run out of energy. You're still going to have to eat. So I think that that is a bad move. I think I would rather sweat maple syrup because then I could just rub pancakes under my armpits and have breakfast. Be attacked by mosquitoes and bees all day. Mm. Are you a sweater? Uh, Yeah, not a lot, but yeah. I don't sweat as much as your average fat guy. Because we do barely do anything. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's me too. I mean, I'm not sweating a lot. Mm. Spaghetti for here is a meal at all times, but it's a lot of carbohydrates. It is. Get it but I don't like I don't like sticky. I don't know if it's a good look either. No. Spaghetti I want to know what the hell you were on when you wrote that. <laughs> I don't know where it came from, but you got to pick one of them. Were you smoking something funny? Nah, I don't know. Did where that cocaine from. smell fantastic? <laughs> you got to pick one. I picked it. I'm sweating maple syrup. Sweating maple syrup. Spaghetti. Maple syrup. Wow. And it would be angel hair. Pasta, right? Because it's hair. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. Angel hair. <laughs> Yours would and be jackass hair. We got a complete tie. <laughs> and both of them are awful. 
They're not great. No, they're not great, but they are what they Dave are. Dave would be bitching the entire time that his hair doesn't grow ziti with lines. I got that all this hair. <laughs> right. I got all this hair, and I'm on a diet, and I can't eat it. We got an after show today with no idea. No, what- we have an idea. We got a guy that shit on you. We, oh, that's right. what we're doing for the we, after show. All right. We, we shit on Dave for 20 minutes. Uh, this guy. It, it is my anniversary, right? This guy, goes, this guy goes pretty hard. All right. All right. I'm looking forward to that. All right, you got anything else? Any? Uh, yeah, we got uh, Patrick writing through the contact us page of the cigar. Is he shitting on me com. too? I'll have to let you know. All this right. is Patrick Van Hoos. If so, I know where it's going. This is uh, Patrick Garcia. Yeah. Mr. J, I'm listening to old shows against your advice, and I just heard Tommy on the episode from July 11th, 2010, your last episode before you quit the show. That's a low blow. Wow. I retired gracefully. So, uh, so listen. Did Tommy quit before you, or you quit before Tommy? It appears that I quit first. All yeah. right. Uh, so you're early quitter. Tommy was breaking Dave's balls over his floby haircut. Ah, Dave see also- how that went? <laughs> and I held off for ten years doing that. It was Dave- time to bring it back. Dave also mentioned his wife bought him a new one, and he keeps it on standby in case the original dies on That's him, which right. it hasn't. Correct. Uh, if he still has it, I suggest a quarantine contest to give it away to a guy like me who who is trying to contain a mop until we get some cash in the barber's hand. Keep up the good work. Patrick, P.S., if you're able to get Ed to use the butter on a Pop-Tart and Raisin Toast on the next show, I'll send you a fiver out of my personal stash, which I had nothing to do with it, but he played both drops. And we didn't even know. The Floby is an awesome thing. And there's a backup so that... If the guy ever goes out of business because it's marketed so terribly. Right. That's the problem with the product is fantastic. The marketing is horrible. And that thing should, especially during this, it should have been on there bigger, more than the My Pillow friggin' guy I can't stand listening yeah, so to. Yeah, so if, if you go to the Floby website, they're limiting warm per customer to prevent price gouging. Wow. And COVID 19 has them delaying fulfilling shipments. Ah, oh, so they are booming. And, and I, I got news for you. Like, and what, what made you? What made you go on there? I just decided to see if it was still being sold. All right, me. you were paying to do other work, and he wasn't doing it. Okay, yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, my wife's been buying like a whole bunch of fabrics and stuff because she's been making masks for uh, for people in my mother in law's nursing home. Yada yada yada. It's taken them four or five days to fill orders. Two guys cigars dot com volume's been high and we're still filling them on the same day so oh, I, think I feel I know like how you hurt your I, hand yeah, i broke my hand patting myself on yeah. the back <laughs> jesus <laughs> because you've been fulfilling the orders uh, well pete has oh all right <laughs> yeah, he's not getting out of his chair because <laughs> he'll sweat and then it'll be all sticky from yeah, the maple, maple syrup. syrup can't have that <laughs> all right so uh let's go to the classic three-way brought to you by classic cigars it's time for this day in classic history Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Classic Cigars are now the most affordable cigar brand in America. With prices as low as $1.50, this cigar has something for everyone. The Classic Connecticut is light and smooth. The Classic Maduro is bold, but never overpowering. The Classic Cameroon sits somewhere in between with hints of sweetness. And the Classic Cuban is a real knockoff of the taste and flavors from old-time Havana's. Classic cigars are sold in cost-saving bundles of 20 and sold in five great sizes, ranging from $1.50 to $2.25 per cigar, which makes Classic the most affordable premium handmade cigar in America. Classic Cigars. We're smoking the Diamond Crown Cameroon here, and yes, now I'm starting to get the Arturo Fuente Don Carlos really starting to come in, in flavor of it. If you're wondering, what does it taste like? It tastes like a Don Carlos more than anything else, I'd say right now, if okay. I was to say what it is. Right, but, uh, but lighter. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not it's as definitely, strong. Yeah, it's milder than the Don Carlos, which is the Diamond Crown influence. I don't I don't say it's mild. It's much stronger than the regular Don oh, yeah. Crown. Right. Yeah, but not as strong as the Don Carlos. Really? Okay. I don't know that I'd throw around the word much stronger. It's stronger, but it's five at, at most. Keep in mind, we did the show where we had the ten strongest cigars. Yeah, it's not a, it's not <laughs> a ten, but it's a seven. I think it's six. Keep Just going. say five. Keep and going. Leave it at that. 
always little, got, it's a little more than he's, medium. He's always got to disagree with us. No matter exactly. what he says, no he has what to it go is, one more. He has to. <laughs> if he does it on purpose. <laughs> I'm saying it's strong, and then you say, no, it's not. Who's our champion? Uh, me. It was multiple yeah, weeks in a row. I think shutout last I week. I got three questions and one tiebreaker, because I think we're going to need it today. So it's over to Barry. Mother's Day is this Sunday, but Mother's Day is proclaimed by the United States President. Two points for getting exact, and one extra point if you know who the president was. What year was Mother's Day proclaimed? Today, Theodore Roosevelt, 1928. Theodore Roosevelt, 1928. You're up, Ed Sullivan. I, I think Lincoln did it <laughs> in 1863. 1863. Uh, this is uh, 1962, and that would be Kennedy. Yeah, it was probably a Hallmark holiday, right? Wow, man. 1863 will win. It was 1914. And it was Woodrow Wilson. So one point goes to Ed Sullivan. See, I had no idea, so I figured I'll go way too early. Let's see if you get this one. Slash a horror film, Friday the 13th, was released in U.S. cinemas today. What year? 1978. 1980 for two points. 1978. 78, 78, and 80. Somebody does have two points. Mr. Jonathan gets God two damn points right and he I knows do. it. Wow. Did you know it, know it? No. That was a complete guess. All right. So over to you with two points in the lead for you. One for Ed Sullivan. Barry, our standing champion, has nothing. And this is the last question, unless we got a tiebreaker. Billy Joel, American rock vocalist, the piano man, we didn't just start the way the you fire. are. He was born in Bronx, New York today. And I know you have some dislike Ed Sullivan for Billy what? Joel. Tony V hates him way more than me. I yeah. think he wants to punch him in the throat. All right. So uh, what year was he born? Is it me? 1945. 45. 51. 51. I actually had 47. 47 for the point and tie. It was 49. 47 was the closest. The point and the tie. We have a two-way tie. Ed Sullivan and Mr. Jonathan. Barry can still triple tie it and keep his <laughs> championship by getting two points. And we always go through this. Theoretically, he shouldn't participate, but you always let us. So Yeah. So you over, make to you, the rules. over to you, Barry. The final episode happened today of The Golden Girls on NBC TV. The final episode today. What year? 94. 94. 1987. 87. 1989. 89. 89. And we have a champion, Mr. Jonathan. It was 92. But Mr. Jonathan, who was a big Golden Girls fan. Big fan. Big, big fan, fan of Estelle Getty. He, he likes horror movies and old ladies. Yes, apparently. Betty White. Betty White, you had a little crush on her. Still do. She's 99 years old. Whatever. Would you still do her? Oh, yeah. I think you'd kill her. Wear that, wear that as a feather in my cap? She's probably got some good cash. I don't care about the cash. I just yes, want to bang her. Do. She still does uh, a sit-in every once in a while. I haven't seen her much no? lately. She's probably in COVID hiding. My, my mother was saying to me just the other day that you know she's probably just sitting there waiting to die at this point. She's got but, $75 million. Does she? That's what uh, Celebrity Net Worth has her at. And w w how old is she? She's 99 years old? Uh, she's about 180, I think. No, she's uh, not. Let me see. I'll figure it All out. All right, you'll figure it out while so, Mr. Uh, Jonathan bangs one out. <laughs> Go <ahead>. Giggity. <laughs> Bob writes through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com with the subject, You Finally Did It. Been hooked on your show for almost two years now. I usually watch on the YouTubes. Yeah. I rarely get to start right at noon. This allows me to always fast forward through your commercial breaks. Well, Not I did, good. 
Mm-hmm. He goes on. All right. Well, I didn't fast forward this past week during Dave's self-administered Floby haircut. There we go. I think I may have even hit rewind a couple of times because I wasn't <laughs> sure yeah. by Dave's facial expressions if, if he was feeling pain or pleasure. Pleasure. That was pleasure. That's his, that's his happy face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep up the great work entertaining us through these unentertaining times. Absolutely. Don't skip past... The show is on because of our advertisers. That's why the show is on. And we're going to start doing some crazy stuff. We Every. We are not. You yes, are, we are. You well, are going to start doing that gonna, nonsense. I'm going to do stuff during the breaks Although, that you, you know don't want to miss. Maybe I'd probably contest. wax my chest if, if that would keep people listening. I'd probably do that and see if I scream Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> Nobody anything, will hear you. Anything to get you naked on the yeah. show. It's, yeah. I'm not naked. You guys hear about the chicken farmer that got a stimulus check? He got his money for nothing and his chicks for free. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. 98 years old. She's 98. Yeah. I don't know if she'll see 100. God bless Wade and Betty Way. Yes, she will. Uh, right. we I got, say 104 I have. We got time to debate this We lost this somebody one. today. Who did we lose? 87 years old. Was Tootie like, Fruity. Yeah. Uh, little, little Richard. Richard. Little Richard. Why was he little? Well, only his boyfriend knows. Okay. <laughs> The following message uh, was submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. And Peter writes, hey, guys, I'm wondering if any of you go through palate struggles like I do since you each smoke seven to eight cigars a day on average. I'd say five for me. Someday you'll catch up to the rest of us. <laughs> you have been a- pounding them because you're sitting there at the doorway all day pounding cigars. Right, right, smoke. But not next week. Not next week. Back to normal with mask on. Less than normal. Yeah. Can I read the goddamn email? Yeah. All right. We wish you would. I'm at a point right now where things seem to change drastically on a day-to-day basis. Out of the three cigars I smoked yesterday, two of them were fantastic as they usually are whenever I smoke them. Today, I went to one of those same cigars and things were quite different. It seemed flat and dull with only a hint of the flavor that I usually get. Uh Uh-oh, COVID. (laughs) I've tried palate cleansers, seltzer water, black coffee, etc. Nothing seems to work. Mm. I can't imagine that one cigar could so drastically be different from another that was sitting right next to it in the same box. So I can only assume my palate is to blame. Anyone else have similar experiences? That could happen. The the guy that was tearing the leaves off, he gets the end. He's supposed to put them in a certain thing. Somebody interrupts him at that moment. He thought he did it. He didn't do it. So here's a a point that I'm going to make for Perdomo. A lot of companies do their primings based on threes. Perdomo splits the, the, the leaves down into nine primings. So he can get pretty damn exactly the same from cigar to cigar. Companies that only split it in three... If you get your middle priming from higher up, closer to Lajero, it's going to burn a little slower. It's going to be a little stronger. There's going to be more flavor. And if they source it from closer to the sand leaf area, you're going to have much less uh, flavor and much less strength. And that's the problem with a lot of manufacturers is they're not subpriming these plants down and into nine layers. And there's no too, too exact. These are snowflakes. They are snowflakes, but yeah. I know I know what I'm going to get when I smoke a Padrone, when I smoke a Perdomo, when I smoke an Aladino. Bigger yeah. companies that are growing the tobacco and they know what they're doing, they're splitting the tobaccos up as they should. Smaller companies, you're going to see more of a difference between those blends. There, there's a lot of factors to mood and actually what you're doing when you're what, smoking What you it. ate before, what you're drinking yeah. with it. And when, sometimes just smoking it at a slightly different speed. It's a different day. You might be smoking it faster, slower than before. So. Well, you smoke a lot of the same cigars all the time. You notice the cigar tastes different than... Yeah, it does. Yeah. He's always pissed off, though, so it's not like that changes anything. No. I don't get angry about it. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, right? It is what it is. All right. Hit me one more. All right. That, that one's a little long there. Go shorter one. All right. Uh, following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of the thecigarauthority.com. And Don writes, I have many friends storing cigars in abundance. More so now than ever with the possible government restrictions and current CO-19 crisis, I noticed some of my friends have their cigars stored vertically to save space in their airtight bins and humidors. Does storing cigars vertically have an effect different than storing them horizontally? I'm happy to see you're all doing well, and thanks for the welcome escape from all the stress of those of us who love the show, Don in Arbor, Michigan. And I'm going to say this, which is what I replied to him. A box of cigars takes up the exact amount of cubic inches, whether it's horizontal or vertical. It's the same size. You're not saving space. There are no manufacturers that store cigars 
and on end, they all storm laying down because when you storm on the end, you run the risk of jamming those ends and cracking the feet. So you want to store your cigars horizontally, not vertically. Absolutely true. Uh, let's take Ataban Byron that were in jaws before, humidified jaws, and it stays for a long time, and the foot ends up opening mm -hmm. up a little bit as time goes on. It's sitting there, pressure's on it. It's opening up. You don't want that to happen. I say always lay them flat. Lay them flat. Now they come in boxes, and they're flat. I'm happier. There's you know, way less damage. Yeah. Way less. I, I used to love cigars that were uncellophane. Mm -hmm. You open the box up, and it was unbelievable. Damage and things would end up happening. So you gotta you gotta weigh your, your things out as it would happen. But uh, storm horizontal every time. That's the way to go. Um, all right, we're gonna talk on the after show about um, somebody. somebody talking some shit about me, hmm. and uh, that's gonna be the whole show. I think we got enough material <laughs> here. <laughs> we got enough. <laughs> so he I'm doesn't gonna, even know you that well, and he's got material. All right, so I'm going to fight back. But your final thoughts of the Diamond Crown 125th, and and a big, big congratulations to um, the Newman family. 125 years, a giant milestone for any company in the United States. <coughs> not pulling something like that. Ne never mind somebody in the tobacco industry, which is never unheard. mind keeping it in the family for four generations. Unbelievable. I respect them so much for it. Um, what are your thoughts here on Diamond Crown? Man, I'll 10? tell you, this is this is sweet. Mm -hmm. That's the best mm -hmm. way I can describe it. I mean, we can argue about whether it's the green lollipop or root beer float or whatever. The sweetness comes through. Very well constructed. The burn line is is virtually flawless. The draw's great. Mm. I got no complaints. I'm glad I smoked it. You know, heavier on the back end as I smoke it is getting heavier and heavier. But see, th this is the real Cameroon, right? If you look at the burn line when mm -hmm. you're smoking it, you see a little bit of oil even. A lot of the Cameroon seems to be drier than this. So this is very good quality Cameroon. Yeah, and it's A quality. I've been going back and forth with the Connecticut and the Cameroon, back and forth to see the different cigars. I want to hear differently from the Newman family. Well, I think it'd be interesting. You know, why not buy a three pack and get a regular Diamond Crown, a Julius Caesar, a Maximus, and then try one of these? Mm -hmm. Or buy a fourth cigar and get at least one of each. Include the Black Diamond in it. Why not? You can buy four. You can buy as many as you yes. want. <laughs> you can buy none. There is at all. no limit on your spending. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Vartan. That's right. <laughs> no limit. Uh, uh, my final uh, check-in with the other stores, we're hovering around the 80 mark. Tickets 80 left. left. 80 tickets 80 left. 80 tickets left. That's it for the anniversary party. So thank you uh, all for that. I was getting scared. Didn't see that happening today. That's a welcome surprise. I think you're in agreement with oh, that. I didn't think we'd be halfway there. Yep. So uh, I think we, we, we possibly could wrap it up today or, or by Monday morning for sure. It's going to be over. Uh, okay, that's it. Um, next week, Mr. Jonathan. The carnivore Carney from the Fluid Dominicana joins us uh, as he gets his meat on. And um, also a uh, special report of people uh, getting back into the cigar shops. We'll see what's going to go on with there. A very happy Mother's Day to my mother, Angela. Happy Mother's Day. Thanks for being there for me, Ma. And, um, and my wife, who says I have to say Happy Mother's Day to her because she listened to the show and I should be doing that. My argument is she's not my mother, but... I didn't say that, but if I did, <laughs> happy Mother's Day to you, too. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers. All the mothers out there in Barry too. That is it. <laughs> the mom, my mother, never mind. <laughs> you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And you've learned nothing else in the last two hours, so always remember to keep the lid end out of your mouth. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.